Hello, how are you? Shall we study Bible together?、Uh, before we do, shall we pray? Father in heaven, preach, teach us your word. Thank you, Jesus, and pray. Amen. All right. Well,、um, as you probably know, the last week we have just finished the book of Revelation. And、uh, today, you are very lucky <laughs> that today, it's,、uh, from, from today, we're going to learn、uh, another book.、Uh, that, uh, we're going to learn from the,、uh, the, the, the letter to Rome, the, the book of Rome. Uh, this is a very significant book, as you, as you know.、Uh, now, the author is a Paul, and、uh, he really wrote a、uh, lot of things about here in the Rome. That,、uh, as you study Rome, you understand the, really the fundamental Christian faith.、Uh, now, before I, we're going to move into the,、uh, learning the Rome,、uh, book of Rome,、uh, I have just a little bit of a question. That is, have you ever thought about what is your calling? is? Um, now, what is a calling actually?、Uh, that is, well, God calls every Christian to do his uh, 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 mission, so to speak. And so, my question is, what's your calling?、Um, do you know exactly what, what, you're, uh, uh, what you're supposed to do in your life?、Uh, okay, let's take a look、uh, in the、uh, book of Roy and study. Now,、uh, Paul wrote this letter. And、uh, the, when he wrote this letter, the, we believe he wrote,、uh, let me show you the next map. He wrote this from the town called Corinth, and he was there in, he, in his third journey.、Uh, probably it was year、uh, 56 to 56、uh, winter, the,、uh, the AD、uh, 56 to AD 57,、uh, the, he was there、uh, in a Currents. And when he was there,、uh, he, uh, he, he wrote a letter to a、uh, church in Rome. But the very interesting about this church in Rome because、uh, the Paul has never been there to start church. And、um, apparently,、uh, so other apostles have not really、uh, been there. The、uh, church in Rome kind of started itself.、Uh, <laughs> Now, how the church in Rome、uh, started is、uh, still kind of a mystery, but there's something that we believe, we, well, some of the scholars think that、uh, the church in Rome potentially started with uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the one couple, the Acura and the Prisca.、Uh, now, because about five or six years before, prior, To Paul wrote this letter.、Uh, the, in his second journey,、uh, the year 51 AD,、uh, Paul was in uh, uh, Corinth again, and in this same city, the Corinth, he met the uh, uh, couple from Rome.、Uh, let me read、uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 1 and 3. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Acura, a native Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Prisca, because c r a u d u s had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker as they were, he, started, he stayed and worked with them. Now, what happened was that、uh, somewhere around、uh, 51 AD and prior to that,、uh, there is an emperor in uh, Rome. Uh, he ordered the, all the Jewish people to not to gather uh, anymore uh, because there was some kind of Jewish revolt there. The Jewish people wanted to kind of be、uh, independent. And then there, so the emperor ordered. The Jew to not to have a meeting. But then, you know, as you know, Jewish people, they ignore the emperor and then、uh, meet every week on the Sabbath and they really continue their worship. And then, so the, eventually the emperor,、uh, Cradus, he got very probably upset and he just cast out. He just let, the, he, he, he let, let the, all the Jews to leave from the Rome. And、uh, because of that, the Acura and the Prisca. The,、uh, the Jewish couple, they、uh, actually left Rome and they came to Corinth. 
And about the same time, the 51 AD, the Paul arrived in the Carmines, and that's where they met, and they started doing the, uh, uh, their business, uh, making tent together. And, but then, we know about six years from after that, the year 56, 57 AD, uh, this actor and the priest girl, they went back to Rome and starting their uh, own house church. Uh, uh, let me read Rome, Ro uh, Roman chapter 16, verse 3 and 5, it said like this. Greet Prisker and Acura, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me, not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meet at their house. Greet my dear friend uh, Epinatus, who was the first convert to Christ in the providence of Asia. Now, this uh, verse in uh, chapter 16 in the Rome uh, clearly indicate that Paul is really uh, addressing, say hello to Acre and Prisca, and they're starting their uh, home church. Uh, so, uh, the church in Rome, apparently, uh, including Acre and Prisca, uh, the several people that Paul met throughout his journey, uh, some of them went back to the Rome, and that's probably how the church in the Rome started. Uh, but then, it's, it's a, still, it's a new church. It's a, probably only five or six years old, and then, uh, you know, uh, it is, it's just a brand new church. Now, and then Paul uh, apparently asked, uh, there's a lady named Phoebe. And uh, this lady, uh, she came from uh, St. Clair, it's a, it's a little town nearby uh, Corinth. And uh, she probably told Paul, Oh, Pastor Paul, I'm going to run for sin. So Paul kind of uh, let, uh, asked Phoebe to take the, this letter to Akron Priscilla or uh, some people they knew in the church in Rome. So. Uh, that that's we know also from the uh, chapter 16 verse 1 and 2 uh, let me read that part I recommend to you our sister Phoebe a deacon of the church in the St. Clair's I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of uh, his people and to give her any help she may need from you for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. So the uh, this lady, the Febe, uh, brought uh, this letter to uh, Rome. And now, uh, of course, uh, why por uh, 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 Paul wrote this letter uh, uh, and then asked Febe to take it to the Rome? Uh, probably because the Paul has some really concern about this church. Um, this church is a very new church, and apparently, uh, you know, Paul never went there to uh, start this church. So, and then, so other uh, apostle or some of the church leader, and um, apparently, there is a kind of group of people that uh, maybe kind of creep into this church and start to teaching the wrong teaching about Christianity. Uh, you have to understand the culture on the Jewish culture and also the uh, Gentile culture, which means uh, Roman culture. Uh, it's a very different, and they're both very different from Christianity. The Jewish people, their basic uh, 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 belief in the way, the style they're living, is uh, they have to obedient, they have to obey the law. And as you do the law, uh, keep the law, and uh, um, do the good work, that uh, you are blessed by uh, 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 God. And but at the same time, the Roman people, they are they 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 worship the multiple gods and the basic idea about God is uh, absolutely not like what we believe in Christian they they, they believe that if they they uh, uh, worship their uh, gods uh, the gods will give it give them a favor and uh, if they don't do you know basically the uh, uh, you, they they treat God like a, a vending machine I would say they they, they they offer and God will give us a, a give them a favor so their culture the um, Greco-Roman culture and the Jewish culture is a very foreign to the Christian culture. And uh, Paul was very afraid that there a bunch of people, probably the Jewish people, came in and started teaching them very wrong things. And um, uh, Paul wrote this letter to kind of correct them or uh, take them to the right 
uh, direction. Uh, let me read uh, chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Paul said like this. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetite. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of uh, naive people. So I think that Paul has kind of a, a, a concern that uh, he really thought that if he won't you know, correct that those uh, uh, false doctrines or some people start uh, teaching them wrong things and uh, church in Rome, uh, that this church uh, end up to be a wrong, you know, uh, they're going to the wrong directions. Uh, so the book of Rome is uh, really uh, Paul right about the uh, doctrines, uh, Paul writing about the, what is the salvation, um, what is the gospel, and what is the God's righteousness, and how, how we can be saved. Uh, it's a very important book for us Christians to read, to understand that what is Christianity is, what is uh, really the theology, the fundamental theology, the basic theology of Christian faith that you can learn from this book. Um, and then, uh, you know, usually uh, when the Paul is such an active person, that usually that he visit different town and then he gonna stay there like a one or two years and then that's where he gonna uh, uh, establish the church and that's how the church was built. Uh, so if he heard that there was a church starting in Rome, he would have go to Rome and uh, 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 you know, apparently uh, Paul himself really wanted to go to Rome, but at, but at this time, the 56 AD, uh, he couldn't go to Rome because uh, he was collecting all the uh, donations of money from the Asia Minor and he had to take it to the Jerusalem. Uh, because there was a, a persecution starting in the Jerusalem and then some of the, some of the uh, uh, Christian probably lost their house and stuff. So Paul had to go to Jerusalem and the help uh, bring that money. Uh, he couldn't really take money with him to go to Rome or he couldn't leave the money at the Corinth and so it's not safe. So he himself decided to take a, 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 this donation money to uh, uh, Jerusalem. That's why he cannot go to uh, uh, Rome this time. So he has have to ask favor to take that letter. At the same time, uh, for Paul to go to Jerusalem was very dangerous. Uh, he may not able to come back alive. Um, so probably another reason he wrote this letter is uh, not only he couldn't go there right now, but at the same time he may not uh, able to go there forever. So he have to really write down the really the kind of like a summary of the uh, uh, the Christian faith. The, uh, so really, the Book of Rome is a very important book for all Christian to learn. Uh, whoa, wow, that was a <laughs> the introduction about the Book of Rome. But let's let's get into the real content. Let me read the Roman chapter one, uh, verse one. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. Now, the verse 1 uh, really introduced Paul himself. Uh, he was saying, I am the Paul and uh, I am the servant of Christ Jesus. Uh, at the same time, he was saying he was called to be apostle. Um, and then clearly, this verse 1 telling us that Paul really knew his mission, why he was called, and uh, the, the reason he was called for gospel of God. He really going to tell the gospel to others, and for that sake, he now become a servant, and now he was called to be apostle. Now, the question I have to you is, uh, have you ever called by God? Uh, and do you know what, is it, what your calling is? Now, uh, when I was around, uh, I, wa I was like a late 
20, oh, I become a Christian around 20 years old, but then uh, I went to seminary, I went to a Dallas Theological Seminary, uh, that was 1986, uh, I went there, I was 26 years old, I clearly remember, but the day I went to the Dallas Seminary and I was interviewed by professor, uh, the, before I entered the uh, DTS, uh, the professor uh, asked me, what's your calling? I mean, have you had a calling? And I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't know how to answer it because to me back then I was 26 years old but then you know the calling is something that I don't know maybe I'm supposed to say yes I had but but the actuality I never had the experience at that time that you know uh, like a God is talking to me like a, if I walk in the street it would be nice if the God said hey Kenji you know go to a seminary and study and become a minister later if someone told, if God told me that vovery, uh, then I can say yes, I heard His calling, but I didn't have that. So when I went to Dallas, I was, oh, I just wanted to study Bible more. Then, well, as far as you pay the tuition, they will let you. So, <laughs> so I, I was always wondering about calling because I heard several different people they had a calling. Um, you know, when I was uh, uh, 20 years old, I became a Christian, as I said. Uh, I went to the Baptist Church in California, and the pastor there, uh, the Pastor Bridges, that, that, that was his name, uh, he, I don't remember any of his message, but one thing I remember was the, how he was called by God, because Pastor Bridges, he repeatedly kind of uh, telling this story, and sometimes he become very emotional, and uh, that's why I kind of remember. And according to his calling was that he, when he was a young man, uh, whether he should start working at the company or he, you know after he graduated maybe at college, um, he went to his pastor, and then the pastor kind of asked him to look through the window, and apparently their office was like somewhere in a high in uh, some building, and then they can see in a, uh, uh, street and uh, uh, you know down there, and then a the bunch of people walking on the street. And uh, Pastor Bridges uh, looked down and saw a bunch of people walking. And then he said uh, that uh, he saw each person's face that kind of looked kind of sad or dark or like a didn't really, didn't have a really future and then not library. And he knew immediately at that time that he got the kind of calling from God that he knows his mission and his really purpose for his life is telling these people the gospel of Jesus Christ. So then he, he become a minister. He immediately go to seminary and then become a minister later. Um, I know another case of the calling that is uh, uh, the church I went in Chicago. Uh, I went to the Japanese church and uh, at the Japanese uh, pastor there, he was a businessman and uh, when he was uh, in uh, Los Angeles, uh, when he used to live in Los Angeles, and then when he was uh, pumping the gas in his car at the gas station, he heard, he said he heard the uh, voice, <laughs> he said the voice was asking him to become a minister or a pastor. And he was so shocked. So after he pumped the gas, uh, he rushed back to his house. And then as soon as he arrived at his house, his wife jumped out from his house uh, and telling him that he, she, she, I mean his wife, she just heard the word from God asking uh, her to be a, a pastor's wife and then they both uh, heard the God's calling at the same time so they decided they quit the business and quit the job and they went to seminary and become a minister and they become a minister at the uh, Japanese church in Chicago um, now how about me yeah I know I know you probably had a question uh, for my case uh, I was around uh, 50 years old, uh, 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 I mean, uh, the mid-50s. I, I, I was, uh, I, 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 at that time, I was doing my own business, and it didn't go too well, but I, I, somehow I was trying to survive there here. Uh, but but then, uh, when I was sleeping, uh, the ice, uh, that Jesus came in my dream, and uh, he wear the dress like a shepherd, and he brought a bunch of sheep with him, and... Uh, then Jesus said to me, uh, feed my sheep. Immediately I understand that means Jesus asked me to be a pastor and a minister. Um, I, I, I was shocked. Well, my, my story is even when I went to Dallas Seminary, uh, you know, 
I I, uh, I I I I got divorced after that. I well, my actually I, I I didn't divorce my wife. She divorced me, and so I thought maybe I shouldn't be a minister, being divorced man. Uh, so I went back to the regular company and went start working at the Japanese company for many many years. And then uh, even though I went to seminary, um, I thought maybe it's not the God's calling for me to be a minister. But then, when I was uh, around 50 years old, uh, Jesus showed up in my dream and uh, he asked me to feed his sheep. At that time, I, I answered by telling Jesus, uh, oh, it's not me, I'm, I'm not, you know, vessel to be like, because to, to me as a person to become a minister, is a really holy person, that's what I thought was. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not that good. I mean, I'm okay, but then, so I told Jesus in my dream, say, oh, it's not me. And then, as soon as I say that, I clearly remember Jesus looked at me with a very kind of angry face, that kind of like, why did you talk back to me, kind of, and then it was so scary. It was the first time that my life that I was so scared by talking back to God, uh, if the, you don't want, you don't want to make God upset, uh, you don't want to make Jesus upset at all. I was so scared. I clearly remember his eyes uh, when he kind of looked at me, and and then he left the sheep, and he disappeared. Uh, and then I, I was sweating, and I woke up, and um, then after that, I thought, oh man. Uh, so I quit my job, and then I went back to the ministry again. And then uh, here I am, and now I came back to Japan about eight years ago and uh, start church here. Um, so that's my calling was, and, um, uh, but how about you? I know it's a kind of long story, but I, uh, Paul, apparently, he know clearly his calling was tell the gospel. Uh, let's move on to the verse 2. The gospel he uh, promised beforehand through his prophet in the Holy Scripture. Now, the Paul also indicate the gospel that he'd been called for. That gospel is one is uh, it, that is being promised in a scripture already. It, it is uh, already has been uh, promised by God. Now, this word gospel, this the, it's a Greek, came from Greek word translation in the Greek word. This is uh, actually meant uh, 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 euangelions is a Greek word, and yuan is a good or very nice or good and. Angelion, uh, the word angel is the same word as like angelion. Uh, angelion part means uh, 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 it's a good uh, 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 news uh, or you know good story. So really, uh, what the, what the gospel is means good news. Good news is uh, basically yeah the, the word evangel evangelion or evangelical an English word came from this uh, euangelion in the Greek word. Uh, the evangelion, evangelical, or the like gospel, which means basically meant good news. So this good news has been already been uh, prophesied. It already been promised by God. And uh, and move on to verse uh, three and four. It said like this: regarding his son, who as to uh, his earthly life was uh, uh, descendant of Dave and who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now Paul also described that good news has been promised by God, but it's, it's about Jesus himself. And amazing things is uh, Paul explained to people in the room that, uh, who Jesus is. In, in flesh means he, he physically uh, he have a human flesh. Uh, God used a girl named Mary, and uh, this Mary is uh, really uh, descendant from uh, uh, Dave. So from from that lineage, that Jesus is our King, uh, divinical King. But at the same time, he does have human flesh. Now, fundamental belief in Christianity is Jesus is one hundred percent God and one hundred percent. He's a man. Now, I, I, I know some of you say, how that possible? Well, see, you have to understand that Jesus had the same physical uh, body like we have. He, 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 he have a human flesh, but the inside, the spiritual, the, the God's word uh, uh, reside in the human flesh. And uh, 
uh, that's why Jesus is. Uh, Jesus often often call himself, uh, I'm, a, I'm a son of man. Uh, he is a very unique being that he is, uh, we Christian will say he is a true God and true man. Uh, Paul already started teaching the uh, church and already here that he was saying that this good news of the gospel is about Jesus came and uh, Jesus came as a king and then uh, he's God himself. Uh, he is a God in human flesh. Uh, that this Jesus, uh, the good news is he came and what he did, he died on the cross and uh, he paid all penalty or death and uh, uh, he resurrected in three days later. So believing that, that we're going to have an eternal life, uh, that's the very good news. We don't have to die. Now that is, that, for that sake, so this good news that Paul said he been called and that's how he introduced himself, isn't that amazing? And verse 5, let's move on to verse 5. Through him, we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. And also the Paul here explained by uh, his own really missions is that to really tell this gospel to uh, basically everybody, and particularly to Gentile. Now, he's writing the letter to the church in Rome. And uh, of course people in uh, this Roman church uh, probably is a mixture of uh, Jews and also a bunch of Gentiles who are Romans. Uh, maybe some of them are, are Greek, I believe. And so the, uh, there are tons of uh, uh, Gentiles there. And apparently they become a Christian, uh, apparently. So uh, Paul is actually telling this Roman church, I'm Paul called by God to tell the gospel and uh, so, so that so that people will believe, you know, uh, Paul again he, here is a very uh, fundamental telling them that faith alone gets to be saved. Uh, it's very very interesting. Let and then let's move on to verse six and seven. And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the, 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 from verse 1 till verse 7, it's a long greetings. Basically, Paul just said, hello. <laughs> and basically, he was saying, I'm the Paul being called by God to proclaim the good news of the gospel and that good news is about Jesus himself that it was being promised for a long time and then what he did and what he uh, 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 done for us and to tell them that so people would believe that's why I'm here and being called that's my calling and then he was telling these people in the room say you as a Christian the Gentile or Jew you are also being called to be uh, uh, Christ or belong to Christ. You are called to uh, be his holy people. Now, uh, you've got to understand that all the Christians are called by God. And um, uh, now, when I was preparing this message, I thought, okay, this is easy. All I have to say is, you are called to tell the gospel, just like Paul. Then I thought maybe I can finish this message, but then at the same time, wait a minute. What is a really calling? What is a real? What is a biblical means calling? Um, now, is that mean, you know, what tells the gospel is one, but then uh, I think it's more than that. Now, most of all, when we tell the gospel to others, you know, some people will respond yes, but many they probably don't understand why they have to be saved. I mean, what is a, what is a saved? I mean, what is a salvation? Why, why people in the world, they have to be saved? Saved from what? If we don't know that, or if we can explain, um, I guess we will miss the point. Um, now, what is a saving? Or what, what we are saved from? Uh, see, people in this world, they wanted to probably go to heaven, and uh, when they say, oh, I, I, the saving, or the, or the Christians say, if we, I believe I will go to heaven. But everyone seems to have a different 
understanding about heaven, um, I heard the Muslim people, uh, their heaven is that you are surrounded by eternal virgins, I guess, uh, after you die or something like that. Um, when I was a little kid here in Japan, uh, there was a one, uh, uh, the, you know, rock group was making very funny song. He was, the, this uh, song was, oh, after I die, I go to heaven, and when I went to heaven, uh, I was surrounded by uh, beautiful women, and uh, all the sake uh, drink was so tasty good. That heaven is, I guess, it's a man's heaven, you know. Then I thought about, what is a woman's heaven? If I'm a woman, I want to go to heaven, the place like uh, I don't mind, I, I can eat as much as cake and the sweet and all the chocolate. But uh, no matter how much I ate, I won't gain weight at all. I, actually, I become healthier. And there's a, there's a, and then maybe there's a young, young, uh, nice looking man somehow devoted to love me or something. That's a part of the woman. I don't know. If I'm a woman, probably I, I, I'd like to go to a place like that. But, Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, is that a really heaven? That's the, being saved means us going to heaven. I mean, and then, uh, but then, what the Bible said about uh, you know heaven is very. It's not. It's it's a, what is it being saved means. The one thing's for sure that I had to really we had to really clearly understand this that is uh, uh, we were going to die. I mean, if I continue this life if I stay healthy and have a friends uh, I know this world is not a perfect place but at least I can just you know uh, live by somehow I, if I have a little money and then I have a, a bunch of friends if I can continue to live here I don't want to go to heaven I don't want to be saved I just wanted to continue to live but then the Bible clearly indicates we all die so from death we got to be saved. And Jesus came. He died for us. So the, our message is very clear that Jesus Christ, the God and man, He died for us as a man. And then that's why he, he, can, he can pay for our penalty as a represent entire human because He's a man Himself. At the same time, He's God. He's most holy. And then Jesus die for us. His blood is really the cleanse our sin. And that's why if you believe in that and then you believe Jesus resurrect, so you too going to resurrect that and have eternal life, that you'll be saved, which means you have a you won't die. And that is a good news that we gotta tell. And then to become a calling is not only telling the good news, but for us to become like Jesus, because Book of Rome really on, already teaches us how what is a calling is. Let me read Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 29. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who loved Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. The Paul in the book of Rome, chapter 8, indicate that us Christians, and he also called the Christian in Rome, telling you, you are called, just like I was called. My, my calling was, uh, is to tell the gospel, and uh, uh, you have a calling too. And most of all, the calling itself is for all Christians, including Paul and us and me, is to be like Jesus. <laughs> no surprise. Uh, let me read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7 as well. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. See, what we are called and what you are called is us to be like Christ in this world. And so that when people look at us, we become the only light of this darkness. We will be a salt in us, uh, this land. Uh, the, when people look at us, they should be able to see, oh, the Christians are a little bit different. How come the person is so cheerful? How come the person is so kind? How come the person is so nice? And then, you know, all the things, it's really the, to glorify God 
and uh, proclaiming the gospel is definitely important and definitely that is the one the calling that uh, we all share but at the same time that's not the only calling the calling is really us to live like Christ now the word Christian means really it's a, a, it's a Christ-like people that is uh, us the Christian means Christ-like people we, we're, 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 we're all the gentle and all the people look at us and all the unsaved people they look at us and they understand that we are like Jesus it was a good news that we are here that Jesus came and he died for us so that all the uh, death issue with the death is gone and that is a good news and that's a salvation uh, we are saved from death and Jesus did it and we become like Jesus and telling that to others at the same time we live like Jesus that is our calling and the Paul is really clearly indicate that in this uh, 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 first uh, seven verse on the chapter one he introduced himself who he is but he's greeting and he actually telling these people in the room say you are being called and I'm writing to you you know amazing well I hope you can stay uh, learning the book of Rome from now on and uh, uh, because the book of Rome is a very very important for all Christian to understand this book and well non-christian as well but uh, okay well Thank you for listening. Uh, shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for today's message and thank you for your teaching. Thank you, Jesus, and pray. Amen. All right, you take care. Have a nice day. Bye bye.